This is OC Diving V9 by Bean Brains. This is a map for a Half-Life 2 co-op mod called Obsidian Conflict. I've been trying to get in contact with creators of maps more often for these videos, and Bean Brains was a little bit hard to get in contact with. One of the other people who helped create diving was Vesuvian. He made all the custom models. At some point a version 10 was being worked on, and he made a video for it showing off the updated visuals he made. I found some contact information via this video, and asked if he knew what Bean Brains was up to these days. Thankfully Vesuvian did manage to get in contact with him. Around the same time I asked the Obsidian Conflict team if they had any leads. Turns out this was actually very fortunate, as they've been trying to get in contact with him as well. Obsidian Conflict has kind of been a bit dead lately, thanks to the Steam Pipe update, which kind of killed off many other Half-Life 2 mods as well. The OC team have been working to bring the mod back to life, and they wanted to include diving in the next release, since it was a very popular map. He gave the team permission to use his map in future updates, and he even answered a few questions for me as well about the map. Thanks Bean Brains. Bean Brains gone to mapping after playing Sven Co-op, a co-op mod for Half-Life 1. He gained interest in source mapping after playing Obsidian Conflict. He wanted to make a similar map to another OC map called Harvest, with gradual permanent progression, but he also wanted the player to have a lot of choice in how they made money. Aside from diving, he also made several test and concept maps, as well as a few break floor style maps for Counter-Strike Source. However, almost all of them have been lost to time. He did link me to this one turn-based PvP concept map he made. Nowadays he mainly does software and web development. Well anyway, let's take a look at this map. When you first spawn on this map, you'll notice you're on an island surrounded by multiple buttons. These are what you use to buy the equipment to help you make money. Of course you have to make some money in the first place to use them. I gave myself some money with a console command, just to demonstrate. Later on I go back to playing fairly, just for a little while. I'll start out with the vehicles. First thing on the left you've got these airboats. You have an option for one with a scanner or a gun. I've never seen anyone use these on this map. Next up is the cheapest boat, the rowboat. Don't get the rowboat, it, it's kind of useless and just flops around. The speedboat's better, it can take some cargo. But you're better off saving for the big boat, which can take a lot of cargo. Finally we have the Uber Harvester, which sadly kinda sucks given its price. You can go up and down using the left and right mouse buttons respectively, and stay underwater forever. But picking up stuff in this thing is so hard it's not really worth getting. As for the non-boat items, first up we have the fishing crate, which lets you store fish, making it easier to sell multiple fish at once. We also have the loot crate, which is pretty much the same but for diamonds. No subscription required. The air tank actually doesn't give you more air, but instead refills your health once it's below 100. It's useful for deep diving or for areas where you have to stay underwater. Refineries are where you turn your gems and fish into money. This one's a portable one you can take with you. The anti-shark snark is a bit of a tongue twister to say. It zaps sharks that come too close. Oh, by the way, this map has sharks in the water. Well, they're Igiosaurs, but this map calls them sharks. The fishing hook is quite interesting. You can only pick it up by the rod, and you have to throw the hook into the water. After being in the water for long enough, a fish will spawn on the hook. You get better fish by going further out. 
can spawn an empty battery case. I'll cover batteries a bit later. And finally along here we have the radar. It makes a very faint blue light when it's over a gem. Because of this it's not super useful unfortunately. This map features a banking system if you trust the other players enough. The more money you put in, the higher the pile of money in the machine rises. At the back are some ammo crates and a portable teleporter. One crate has to be unlocked later. I don't know if you can send gems and stuff through the teleporter. When I was doing some testing earlier I wasn't able to do so. Once you made some money you can buy barrels of oil to make a good profit. Off in the distance is a rig you can buy the oil at. However, you can only buy so much at a time as the rig has a limited supply of oil that refills. At the back here there's some panel spawners that you can use to make bases or bridges with. I've seen people use these to make a bridge all the way from the spawn to the rig. If you spawn a prop you don't need, you can just chuck it into this disintegrator. There are several apartments you can buy if you need to store something I guess. Two keys are spawned that open and close the door if you get too close. I remember reading somewhere that you can disintegrate one of the keys if you don't want it, but it appears you can't do it in this version. On top of the apartments is the refinery. There's an inventory of items you can send here for points. Gold bars and diamonds are worth the most. And before I forget, there's a gun shop where you can buy weapons. I suggest the pistol and crossbow, as they both work underwater. So this map's called diving for a reason. To get the good stuff, you need to go diving. My first goal was to get some panels to make ramps up to the refinery, since climbing up the ladder is a bit of a pain. I got attacked by sharks a lot. Since I was the only person playing and normally there'll be like six or more people playing, I was pretty much the only target. Eventually I got so sick of dealing with sharks that I brought some firepower. I personally prefer the pistol over the crossbow as you can get more shots in. By the way there's some medical stations in the gun shop if you need some healing. While I was recording, I was trying to remember how to store items in this mod, so every now and then you'll see this blue and white menu pop up. I did work out later, you have to push the left bracket to open a menu, use the dash key to put away the item you're holding, then use the right bracket to bring the item out. I decided I wanted to take a break from getting eaten by sharks, so I went off to the oil rig to show it off. If you're having trouble mounting a ladder in the water, you can push use on it to mount it easier. At the top you'll see the oil vendor. To the left of him is the amount of oil left. It refills after a short while and you can get batteries and upgrades to make it go up faster. You can also sell crystals here when you get access to them.
below are several rooms with assorted props in them. There's also this lever here that I don't think does anything. You can also open a drop hatch if you want to load a boat from underneath. There is this one door here that I can't open. I'll show you what's on the other side later on. Selling oil barrels is probably the quickest way to make money on this map. Along the way I found this fish ring that will spawn occasionally. If you put your fishing rod within it, you'll get higher quality fish. I got a bit bored of oil delivery and decided to check out the science lab. Hey, just jumping here post editing to say if you download this map right now, these trees will have missing textures. To fix this, I've left a download in the description. You have to unpack its contents into your materials folder for Obsidian Conflict. It should be under something like this. Well, it's more of a rocket silo than a lab, but it has lab stuff in it. Once you earn enough money, you can drain the silo and build a payload. Over here is a little area you can dig down to find some buried treasure. A little trick I found is, for some reason, if you hold something either with the grav gun or your hands in a look at the right angle, the sharks won't be able to hurt you. You will drop the item if you get hurt, however. I also at this point remembered how to store items. Just a reminder, it's left and right bracket for the menu and you push the dash key to store stuff away. Sometimes the corpses of the ichiosaurs stay around after they die and they kind of move around on their own. It can have some um, interesting results.
before I forget, let's go back to that hidden room. You'll find a floppy disk inside if you manage to make it to the window. You have to make a ramp outside to get up there, however. To use it, you need to access the upper area of the lab. Normally you need a charged battery to get up there, but I cheesed it this time with a plank. To get upgrades on this map, you have to insert the floppy disk into this floppy drive on the desk, and then walk into this teleporter. You'll be taken to this science fiction-y room where you can choose what upgrades you want. Sadly, the game crashed for me at this point, so I just decided to give it playing fairly and cheat. I wanted to get a video done, I wasn't really keen on playing for another 5 hours. To give yourself points in Obsidian Conflict, you need to open up the console, type SV Cheats 1, and then type Give Points followed by a number. Don't make it too big a number as I find sometimes you crash the game. Well I haven't really shown the warehouse off yet so let's head over. Honestly, there's not too much at the warehouse. You can make some money selling cargo to the spawn in the lab. You'll get different types of cargo, so you might get normal cargo which has no special effects, or explosive cargo that will blow up if it's knocked around too much. It's not normally as profitable as oil because the cargo will lose its value as time goes on, but I guess it's an option if you want to do something different. If you head up to the roof, you can purchase the transporter. I mean, in theory it can transport a lot of the cargo at once, but due to its size and how Source handles physics, it's a buggy mess most of the time. I tried transporting some cargo in it and it just did not work. In the 
corner of the map of No Island, if you look underwater you'll find a pathway. Now normally you need a few air tanks down here to survive, but since I was already using cheats and I was getting sick of dealing with the sharks, I just gave myself god mode. You'll find a blocky underwater pathway along here. You have to destroy a corridor of panels to get through. I hope you brought that air tank. After you make it through, you'll find an elevator. Taking it down, you'll arrive at a room full of strange looking pillars. Breaking these will give you crystals that you can use to make charged batteries, or you can sell at the oil rig. I also found a floppy disk while I was down here. These will spawn very rarely and I wasn't expecting to find one. I should also talk about the altar. For now it's kind of useless. Beam Brain is mentioned in an earlier version of the map, you can make sacrifices here to improve the odds of getting good items or replenishing items faster. But in version 9 it does something very different. We'll need to get 4 gems. These are the white, red and blue gems you find outside and a special green gem that can only be found here. To get to it you need to get above the entrance where you came in. So you either need to bring a prop in here, or if you've unlocked the tower cannon, you can use it to get up here. I've also managed to surf my way up here before, but today, since I'm already cheating, I must just use some good old no clip to get up here. Once you've managed to put all the gems on the right platform, which takes a bit of trial and error, you'll be able to use the teleporter. This lets you teleport crystals and anything else you find in here to anywhere on the map. Well, anywhere that it's set to. So now it's time to launch that rocket. I gathered all the floppy disks, by the way there's another one at the top of the oil rig. Made a battery for the lift in the lab. Got 5 air tanks, 5 barrels of oil, and went over to the lab to launch this rocket. As I mentioned, to use the elevator here you need to put in a working battery. The process of loading the rocket is quite fiddly. So 
so I just gave up and used no clip to get the barrels in. Once I had everything ready, it was time to launch. Now it's possible to go to the moon. When you're on the moon, the first thing you should do is grab an air tank from the rocket and head over to the base. You'll find a broken cage. Put the air tank in there and you won't suffocate inside. You'll notice there's a buggy outside of a tower cannon that you can use to blow up boulders to get moon rocks. I wasn't able to get any footage of it, but these boulders will fall back down to the ground after a while, so they don't run out. Moon rocks are a good way to make some pretty good money. Also I recommend you get teleporter stability, or else if you use the moon teleporter you might uh, end up in the wrong spot. To finish up, I went back to the warehouse to pick up a gift you get. It's a fireworks cannon. It can be turned on and off using a button on the side. After the rocket launches, there's a chance a plane will spawn on top of the warehouse. This will be totally random, but you can force it to spawn by typing this command into console. The plane's a little shonky to control at first. But once you get used to it, it's pretty fun. You have to bank left and right using the A and D keys respectively, and then use the W and S keys to point up and down. The plane moves forward on its own and you can fire rockets from it. 
Not too good for shark hunting, but eh, it's still fun. Before I wrap things up, I should probably talk about version 10 a little bit. Version 10 was put on hold due to the Source Engine's edict limit. The Source Engine has a list of entities called an edict that keeps track of entities between the player and server, and it maxes out at 2048 entities. Due to hitting this limit, Beanbrains put the map on the back burner, and eventually stopped working on it and moved on. Fun fact, I ran into this limit while making well. In fact, you could probably crash a server running this if enough demo man spam stickies. But anyway, let's have a look at version 10. So that's pretty much it for diving. This was one of my favorite maps back in the day. I love ocean themed maps and I've been meaning to look at this map for a while. I'd like to thank Beanbrains and Vesuvian and of course the Obsidian Conflict team for making this mod and helping me out with this video. There's a lot of interesting OC maps and I have a feeling I'll be coming back to this mod at some point to look at more of them.